Hey guys, uh, I've had a go at the DigiSpark and made it work. I got my first little blink sketch working, so I'm very, very happy about that. It wasn't quite as easy as I'd imagined, but uh, it is easy once you've got all the software set up. So I was going to run through some of that and hopefully it will help you guys out. Now there's one thing before I get to that I wanted to tell you. Now, when you um, load stuff onto the DigiSpark, you don't want it already plugged into the computer before you get the programmer involved. So the best thing is, is to get one of these USB extension cables and have that plugged into the DigiSpark all the time uh, and plug that in and out of the computer when it's necessary. Because you don't want to mess around with the, the sort of the plating on the PCB board and keep unplugging and plugging that in. So it's a really good idea to get one of those extension cords, I think. Um, and the way you should power it, because I don't think putting it in the PC is a great idea. I'm using uh, one of these little sort of USB boost battery things. So it's a good idea to grab one of these. Kicked out five volts, it uses like a buck converter type thing to boost it up to five volts from two AA batteries. And I'm using rechargeable ones, so it's gonna be really cheap. Anyway, let's get to the, the sort of setup on the PC. Right, first things first, get yourself to digistump.com. And then we're gonna to navigate to the DigiSpark on the products menu. And then we'll go to resources. Now this is where they've got a list of stuff that you can use. The schematics are there, Eagle files. I never use any of that stuff. But the software stuff is here and also the wiki, which is really, really useful. So get to the download part. And there's a lot of stuff here. But really, if you're on Windows, you want this one. If you're on Mac, you want that one. I don't know anyone on Linux. I mean, I do, do I can't speak, dual boot it. Uh, just for kicks really, but it's not really usable for me because I use the Adobe suite, so I can't use that. But they're all here, so uh, you want to go to the download section of here. It comes from SourceForge and it'll automatically start downloading in a second. Right, so we're going to save that. Uh, while it's doing that, let's head back to the site and let's go to the wiki. Oh, they've already got a DigiSpark, a uh, DigiX section, I didn't realise. So. At the, the DigiSpark wiki, it's got first steps, connecting your DigiSpark, Arduino drivers and all that kind of stuff. But it's got all this other stuff here about shields and uh, troubleshooting and stuff like that. But for now, we just want to uh, head over to this bit that we are at before from the download and look at some of the instructions for the installation. And also, if I scroll down a bit more, using the Arduino IDE. Now, it's kind of easy. It's exactly the same ID that you recognize from usual Arduino stuff, but you're gonna have some different options and there is some stuff in the examples section which is really interesting. Um, you wanna select the board and the programmer and all that kind of stuff. Um, one of these I didn't do very well, so I'll, sh I'll make sure that I show you so that you don't uh, fall down the same holes that I did. So once this is finished downloading, I'll speed this up a bit. We can get started. Right, so it's downloaded. I've got the zip here, and inside we've got the Arduino IDE, Windows driver, and USB programs. Now I'm going to want to extract this whole thing, so I'll throw it in there. Right, so once you've downloaded the zip, if you extract it somewhere onto your drive, um, within the folder, the DigiSpark Arduino Win32 folder, you've got uh, the IDE, which is just in here. It looks exactly the same as the normal Arduino IDE. Um, but it's been modified to work with the DigiSpark. You've also got a Windows driver, which you're going to need to install. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is installing the bootloader. So that should be done, hopefully. And then we can start up the IDE. Right, now it looks very, very similar. Uh, in examples though, you'll see that there are lots of DigiSpark examples that you can use. The coding's the same, pretty much everything else is the same. There's a couple of things in here you'll need to change, like you'll, you'll uh, select the DigiSpark Tiny Core, and for the programmer you need to select DigiSpark. Now when I first installed this, um, it was selected as USB ASP. And so it didn't work. And I struggled with that for about half an hour until I realized that it needed to be DigiSpark. But uh, I'll pull over the DigiSpark and we'll upload a, a sketch. Now I'm gonna just open up one of the examples. So let's try 
DigiBlink. It's the first, oh no, that's the wrong one. Let's try a different one. Examples, DigiSpark something. Must be on here somewhere. Start, there we are. DigiSpark example start. Now Blink is the same kind of thing you put on any Arduino to start with to make sure it's working, or at least I do. And it's certainly the way I started learning with, uh, with Arduino and, and it's the way I started learning with Raspberry Pi, so it's a good idea. Now, I have a circuit wired up already, but I'm using PIM5, so I'm just gonna go ahead and change this. Um, I'm not sure what Model A and Model B mean on here. I haven't, uh, I haven't got a clue which one I've got. Um, I'm gonna go for Model B, because it's I've only just bought it, so hopefully it's a recent one. If I just change those to, uh, to PIN 5, it'll work fine. Now, I'm not gonna bother saving this, but I'm gonna upload using Programmer, and when I click that, It'll say running this uh, DigiSpark uploader, plug in your device now. So you don't want to plug it in before you upload. So if I just pop it in. So I've plugged that in and hopefully it will recognize it. Oh, it needs to install the device first. Something I hadn't thought of, okay. But it seems to have uploaded anyway, despite Windows needing to do this. It does say that it's 100% complete. I'm just gonna let this go through. So installing this DigiSpark bootloader. So that will now be recognized as a device on a computer, but it has uploaded. Let's just try that again. Oh, there we go. So this is, this is what happens when you, uh, you have it already plugged in. So now it's not expecting to upload to the thing. So if I unplug it again, upload using programmer, plug it in again. And there we go, it's uploaded. So it's really simple. Uh, it's your standard code in a very small bit of hardware. It's pretty awesome, I like it. Um, and because it's slightly different, there are different libraries I imagine, but I haven't come across anything like that yet, but we'll see. Uh, and there's loads of examples in here, so I think there's so much for people to get started with. Uh, remember that you can always go to the wiki on DigiSpark, and they've also got a forum where you can ask questions. So do that, don't ask me, because I don't know how to use it yet, but. The more I get used to it, the more I'll show you guys and hopefully uh, I'll come up with some interesting applications for it. All right, thanks for watching.